Welcome back to this tutorial on the vehicle overhaul. So in this video we are going to talk about the 3D tracks and setting up the wheels with a spline. So since I left you in the last video I've changed all the skirts. I've imported the skirts from the actual Tiger and I've placed them so nothing else changed since the last video. So let's get back into it. So now in order to see what I'm doing, I'm going to hide those two components. So I'm going to go into the render tab and untick the visible thing. Uh, it's important that I tick it back on when I'm done so I can see the repair volume. I'm also going to hide the skirts because they are kind of in the way. There we go. Okay, we'll bring them back right after. So let's do the left spline. I will delete the right spline and only focus on the left spline for the time being. So now what we need to do is have each one of those points to be where they, they physically should be. Um, what is important for you to understand is that each com there should be a point at every wheel contact point. So here here, 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 all the way down. And we also need a spline point on the upside because when this wheel is going to go up, then the 3D track is also going to bulge up while it's going that way down. And when the wheel is going to go down, then this 3D track is going to follow the same way. So this is important to have a spline point at every wheel connection all the way across the tank. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, we'll go into rear view, back. Okay. So now I'm going to select all of my points. Maybe if I go in unlit, yeah, that is going to be easier. So disregard this. This is the old one from the, the, the tiger tank. So we can actually see how bigger the king tiger is from a regular tiger. So I'm going to move this point around here, turn off the snapping. I'm just placing my points. I will work on the actual curve a little bit later. Right now it's just focusing on the points. So one connection is here. Then we have another wheel here. This is definitely not the most fun part, but it needs to be done. Okay, so now we have, at least we have the same amount of wheel from the two, which is a good thing. That means less work for us in the next step. Something like this. And again, we finish the wheel. So it's like a sandwich in between the two. Okay, why? Oh yes, so now we don't have the same amount of wheel. I was trying to figure out how that could be, but now I was missing one wheel. So this little guy should have one more wheel than the tiger. Okay, that's why. That's why I'm missing one here. Oops, I unselected it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the inside points linear. Here, yes. Spline point type, linear. Let's all check that it worked. It worked, okay. Now I'm going to work a bit more on the curves in order to have something that is following the wheels nicely. So that would be something along those lines. Yeah, we'll, this one could need some more love. Okay, I would say close enough for the time being. Yeah, 
selecting spline point in Unreal can sometimes be a bit painful, so you have to be very accurate to where you click. Okay, let's try to have a nice curvy shape here. Nice. Okay. Okay, so one last thing. The good thing, because we added uh, one extra point here, it is a common issue is, as you can see, if I go into perspective, like all of my points, the X axis is going that way and the Z axis is going up. Like if I check this guy, it's always the same. And here is going to be my Z axis going down and the X axis going that way. But on the new point I added, that's a problem. You see the Z axis is going up, so I need to rotate it down. So what I do usually is I don't do it straight in here, I do it here. So I use like 180 and 180. And then if you unclick and click again, now it's properly uh, orientated. If you don't have the same orientation, then your 3D tracks are going to go into some sort of spiral, like a, some sort of elix shape, which is not what you want. Okay, so now this is more or less my proper path. This is 3D tracks were not updated live, so don't worry about it. Now I'm going to duplicate this track, rename it. The name is very important. If you have the wrong name, it's not going to work or it might even crash. There we go. And I am going to set this into positive. Yes, so now the right track is on the right side. I'm going to save this hit compile. Okay, so now we've covered the spline portion. We are going to go back into the tracks component and we are going to plug in the correct track seg because this one is the one from the tiger. So we need to plug in the SM track seg. Before we do that, we make sure there are no collision onto that track seg, which is correct. I click on collision and I have nothing. And to be extra safe, we can even go here and say no collision. That is extra safe. Like there is no way this is going to have a collision now. So yeah, let's be safe. Let's save it. And now I'm going to plug in my, oops. There we go. My tracks. Okay, are here. And one thing that is also important to mention uh, is the pivot point. Ah, that's a good thing. Should not be here. The pivot point should be center of mass on the low end like if you do a center of mass the the pivot could be somewhere around here but we want it to be on that axis here and dead center so that would be where we want pivot to be here so if you put it here like physically speaking it should be here because the rotation is going to be around that axis then you are going to have some like in you're going to have some weird position uh, in that area here. So let's just super quickly re-export the track seg with the proper oh, don't need the collision uh, with the proper angle. Okay, so this is almost correct, but it is actually not because first thing the object is not in zero wall position. So I'm going to affect this pivot to be oh no okay my bad I'm in the wrong display. Disregard the pivot is actually here. So that is physically correct but for us it's wrong so i'm going to go dead center so that's how it should be i'm going to re-export the track seg okay and re-import it track seg let's look at our pivot now and yes that is exactly what we want dead center on the flat axis save and make sure it's connected to both. And let's let's try this. You see how this is the name for the left track spline. This is the name for the right track spline. So if you do a mistake in the way it is named here, it is either going to crash or just not work at all. Let's have a quick look. I don't think the simulate is going to bring me with the 3D track. I don't think it is. It is not. So what we need to do is we need to actually play which is fine, this is a very light map, there is nothing going on but boxes and cylinders. 
Okay, now we can have a look. So we can see that the tracks are way too close to each other. So we need to play with the offset and yeah, let's do that first. So in the tracks components, we have an offset here because this is a way larger track. So let's try with 25 and we may work our way back down if we have to. It would be cool if we could have a look directly into simulate, but we don't. Let's see how that looks. I think I need to increase the, the offset even more. Tracks. So I went from 15 to 25. Let's try 32. Okay, getting there. I, I actually think that's 32 is a good number because we can see the connection here and the connection here. So yeah, I think 32 is is what we need. Okay, so now let's make sure it is properly centered and that it's not clipping inside the chassis. So I'm gonna press Shift P to go into admin cam. Yeah, I think it I think it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, this one is perfect because you can see the, the, the middle of the track is going in between those, uh, those wheels. So yeah, this one is perfectly placed. Okay, so we have set up the 3D tracks, we have set up the, the spline. The next step now is to actually set up the wheels here. So we have, let's count, we have front wheel, rear wheel and in between we have one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so it goes from nine all the way back to one if it's named properly it should be like this and that will make our life a lot easier etc etc so let's set up the, the wheels it is in the same place tracks component here and we have left wheel and right wheel so let's go with the left one first. So we have wheel L1 all the way to nine, but we know that the tiger was eight wheels only and this one is nine. So I'm gonna have to add one more wheel. I'm gonna duplicate wheel nine and rename it to nine. So it should be eight, nine, seven, six, all the way on to one. This is correct. Let's do We'll focus on the right one after. So now that we're correct, we need to as uh, to assign each spline point a wheel. So let's say this is wheel nine here, and I have a point here, and I have a point here on top. So now I have to check each point has um, an index, like uh, some sort of, of name. So I need to say wheel nine is going to be connected to vertex number zero and vertex number whatever. So we have to figure out what that number is going to be. So if I select my left spline here, I can see that this is input key zero. So this is the first key, the first um, point. So if I don't close my loop, it goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all the way across. So wheel nine is going to be zero and 19. So let me write this down so we don't waste too much, too much time. So it's one, two, three. Seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and we said 19 on top, so this would be 18. Okay, so 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11. Okay, 
So let's go back to our little component. So wheel one, according to what I have um, written down on my paper is going to be eight and 11. So 11 is the one on top and eight is the one at the bottom. So basically what that means is on my spline, this is eight here and this is 11 here. So wheel number one is connected to eight and 11, which is what I've typed in here, eight and 11. Let's move on. Wheel L2 is going to be 12 and seven. Wheel three is going to be six and 13. Wheel four, one, two, three, four is going to be five and 14. So that's correct. Wheel five is going to be four and 15, four and 15. Come on, I'm gonna have it. Yes, there we go. Wheel six, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, three and 16. Wheel six, we said three and 16. Wheel seven is two and 17, 17 and two. And wheel eight is one and 18. Yeah, this one, I always use a little bit of paper. So that way I, I, I can write it down and zero and 19, 19 and zero. Okay, so now each wheel should go up and down and the track should follow. I'm gonna save this, compile, check my checklist. Set the spline to match each wheel contact point, done. Set the track seg mesh in track component for left and right, done. Set 2D track element ID for each side of the invisible mesh and distance swap. So that's what we've done here, five and four. And now what I want to do is everything that I've just done for the left side, I want the same on the right side. But now I'm gonna have to rename all of these. Faster to rename than to retype everything manually. So it's going to be wheel, oh shit, wheel or three, wheel or four, wheel or five, wheel or six, wheel or eight, wheel or, okay, I've done a mistake here, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, now we have both sides properly set up. What's next? Now I think this is all we needed to do for this video. So in the next video, we will cover the seats and the views. So I'll see you there.